Hi! Today we have a very, very big challenge. We're going to talk about what's up inside of the cell. And what's up inside of the cell? Well, that's what we call metabolism. Well, if we really want to put things simple, let's talk about what metabolism is. Metabolism is, simply put, all chemical reactions that happens inside of a cell. So all the chemical stuff going on inside of you, all that is called metabolism. And to make things easier, let's group these metabolic processes, these chemical processes, into three categories. I will call it, the first one, just recycling. You will not find a textbook that will call it recycling. But let's call it that way. The first one, recycling, <clears throat> um, talks about like maintenance and repair. You will find that the cell is going to break down products. That is called catabolism. Is going to make up some products. So it doesn't always break, sometimes also builds. The building part is called anabolism. Okay, our next group, growth and division, there is nothing to talk about it. It's very self-explanatory. It's about growing and, and dividing. The last group, I call it special processes. And I call them a special because that involves producing secretions. Yeah, if your nose is running, you are producing secretions right now. If you have saliva in your mouth, you are producing secretions right now. If you are sweating, you are producing secretions right now. Okay, what else on the special ones? Hmm. Um, contraction. Yeah. If you can walk, a lot of muscle is being contracted to let you move around. <clears throat> Even if you're just sitting right now, your muscles have some tension, so you have some contraction going on to keep you sit. Um, what else on the special ones? Ah, I call that one communication. Hmm, what could be communication? Well, what happens inside of your brain? You have a bunch of cells, nerve cells, and one cell can communicate with another just by releasing some chemicals, all right? So that will include almost all the chemical reactions in our body or in in cells in general. So <clears throat> just to um, go back and review, metabolism is all the chemical reactions that happen inside of your cells. Okay, let's face it. Metabolism is very, very wide. So we're gonna focus on just two important cell processes for now. I'm going to let you think about what do you think is going to be probably the most important chemical reaction in our planet? Hmm, what could that be? Well, let me give you a clue. Yep, we have our happy sun. And this is probably going to be the biggest clue. Happens in plants and green algae. You got it photosynthesis photosynthesis is no doubt the most important chemical reaction in our planet and of course the most relevant chemical reaction for all living things another important one I will say the second most important is going to be what we call cellular respiration Cellular respiration is nothing but how you use the chemical energy build up during photosynthesis. Huh. That's what we call cellular respiration. So they are related. Okay. And we are going to talk right now about cellular respiration. We're going to spend a big deal of time reviewing what cellular respiration is and why we call it cellular respiration. 
if I recall well, I haven't seen a cell with lungs. So why we can call it cellular respiration? Well, you will see it. Cellular respiration is what happens inside of the mitochondria. Remember, this is going to be the diagram that you will see on your test books or state test uh, for mitochondria. So what happens is mitochondria is going to get the food. Let's call it uh, sugar most of the times. So what you're going to see instead of sugar is glucose. More fancy. So glucose goes inside of the mitochondria. A bunch of chemical reactions are going to happen inside of this little guy here. And afterwards, mitochondria is going to provide energy that we can use in the form of, of course, the famous ATP. All right, so the mitochondria is going to be that special structure, that organelle that is going to provide the energy that we need, the ATP. See, it's going to be our uh, gas station for energy. All right. I have to confess, most of my life, I was totally clueless about why in the world we call this cellular respiration. It really bothered me for so many years. I was, come on guys, you get sugar, food, right? You process that in the mitochondria, yeah, that's fair enough, and you produce energy. Why do you call it cellular respiration? That looks more like digestion to me. Hmm. Okay, but after I realize that in order for these processes in here to happen, you need, guess what? Oxygen. Molecular oxygen, O2. Hmm. Now I start to realize, okay, now this really could be called cellular respiration. So you need oxygen for this uh, process inside of the mitochondria to happen. So one gas comes in, another gas is going to come out. What do you think is going to be the gas that is going to come out? I think you're guessing what I'm guessing. CO2. Now it looks like respiration to me, don't you think? Oxygen going in, carbon dioxide going out. Now I'm relief. Now I understand why they call it cellular respiration. It really bothered me for several years. But you have it. All right, all right, I know what you're thinking. At the beginning I was talking about metabolism and chemical reactions, and we haven't seen a chemical reaction yet. So I have to keep out my word, and I'm gonna deliver, yes, a chemical reaction. So what we start with in here is uh, glucose, so, Let's make a very simple structural formula for um, chemical formula for glucose, ooh, 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 ooh. which contains six carbons, twelve hydrogens, and six oxygens. Uh, what do we need for cellular respiration? Yep, it's over there. We need oxygen, and this is going to produce first of all the energy, right, in the form of ATP. Hmm. What gas is going to be produced? Yeah, CO2, carbon dioxide, and also water is going to be produced. So that's the chemical reaction for cellular respiration. There you have it. So remember, this is the glucose, okay? And glucose is a carbohydrate. Why they call it a carbohydrate? I'm going to give you a little trick in here. You know what will happen if we... Um, simplify these subscripts over here. We can simplify these 6 to 1, this 12 can be simplified to 2, and this 6 to 1. So that's what we call it carbohydrate. <laughs> of course, you knew that. <clears throat> okay, that's it for cellular respiration. We need to take care of, yeah. The most important reaction of all. 
photosynthesis. <laughs> okay, what do we need for photosynthesis? Well, we need chloroplast, of course. I'm going to draw a leaf over here, but you have to remember that not only plants have chloroplast, algae have chloroplast, some bacteria have chloroplast, um, even some protists have chloroplast. Yeah, it's not only plants, but leaves are very representative. Plants are very representative. Okay, so what do we have in here? We will see that in order to be able to perform photosynthesis, chloroplasts are going to require um, water, also carbon dioxide, Of course, do not forget that this happens in the presence of sunlight. So let's make our little sun over here. Smiley, of course. And this is going to produce carbohydrates, sugar, starch. So let's make the general formula for glucose here. C6H12O6. And what else is going to be produced? Um, at the end of photosynthesis, oxygen, precious oxygen. Remember, the only source of oxygen in our planet, the only source of oxygen in our planet is photosynthesis. So without photosynthesis, no oxygen. And do not forget that we all know that plants and trees are important for producing oxygen, but most of the oxygen in our planet comes from algae. Yeah, that green stuff in the ocean. That's where probably most of our oxygen comes from. Photosynthesis in the ocean performed by algae. Keep that in mind. Okay, now you have both chemical reactions side by side. You can see the similarities and you can also analyze the difference. Um, Remember, solar respiration happens inside of the mitochondria. You, you will see the diagram of a mitochondria as an oval shape. And inside you will see circular channels. Photosynthesis, on the other hand, happens on autotrophs inside of a chloroplast. Chloroplast is going to be also an oval shape, but the lines that are going to be used in your diagrams are going to be straight lines, not circular channels, straight lines for chloroplast. In the chemical reaction for cellular respiration, you start with glucose and oxygen, and you will produce ATP, carbon, di carbon dioxide, and water. In photosynthesis, it's like you start from the end. You're going to get the carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight, some energy over here, right? To produce glucose and oxygen. Keep in mind that plant cells, they don't need oxygen. For them, oxygen is a waste. Huh. But what is a waste for them is a treasure for us. We cannot live without oxygen. So what is a waste for the cells is going to be super important for the rest of the aerobic organisms and vice versa. Do you notice? In your cells, in animal cells, um, you will have, uh, in every cell, excuse me, on every cell you will have that the products in here, besides the energy and water, you, you will see carbon dioxide. Carbon, di carbon dioxide for us is a waste. Huh? But if you look at plants, they love carbon dioxide. They need it to make food. So, it's a very nice and a very convenient society between autotrophs and heterotrophs. So, keep that in mind.